Auntie Rose has always loved the city. And I wonder sometimes if the city loved her. And yes, the house is going to be preserved forever. I don't have to beg anymore. I don't have to go to people and they shut the door in my face. All of my work deals with things um, and people who have been forgotten on some level. I had to cut the two corners down. Yeah. And take all those wood slides down off the roof. Oh, I see. We jumped out of bed at 6 o'clock today in the morning. Oh. Things become really important when they become symbolic. So, of course, the floor that she walked on that would have been discarded, you have to ask yourself, is this something that's, that's worthless or is it something that's priceless? <laughs> Miss Baldwin, she's 92, I believe, and the house is the house at, at the time that she came over was in its state of abandon. So she was, it was amazing to see her her recollections of the space, and she could, and she also described where um, where Rosa Parks would sit and where the television was and where the telephone was. Um, so it was it was. Um, it was also important, I think, for, for people to, to know that Rosa Parks did live there. What you need is quiet and you need uh, some, some meditative time to recompose and give dignity back to the structure. When you do something that you really believe in, it, it's, uh, it's easy. It's much more difficult to make just a little painting than it is to save this house. It's a collective force, I'm part of something. People want this to happen.